the USDA's National Organic Program Certification Process. Narrated by Julie Larson, uh, also the developer of the course. The road to certification can seem like a long one, but if you do a few things at the very beginning, uh, it can make the road uh, be a lot less bumpy. So, um, first thing uh, before you do anything is be familiar with the standards. Um, go over them. Uh, be sure that your operation can fulfill those requirements. Um, if there's anything that isn't quite right, be sure to change it. Um, but you can't uh, change anything unless you really know what is required of you in the first place. So uh, there's three years of um, abiding by the standards for a piece of property uh, before you can be certified organic. So there is such a thing called transitional organic where uh, you begin the process and you know you're not going to be able to be certified, but uh, you've done your, your um, all of your paperwork, you've sent it in, uh, and you've started the ball rolling. Uh, and this kind of gets you in the habit of providing documentation um, so that you're set up the following year. Um, there's also, uh, maybe you just um, uh, bought a piece of property or renting, and you can uh, prove that you that nothing has been uh, used um, on that any kind of uh, chemicals or uh, synthetic pesticides have been used on that piece of property for three years. And you can get affidavits from the former owners, or if you're renting from the owners now, uh, maybe that uh, piece of property has been in CRP and. Uh, um, so, it, or has just been laying fallow, nothing's been done to it other than just being mowed maybe, um, then uh, you can go ahead and uh, apply for certification straight out of the gate. But you do have to have some kind of documentation for those three years. The next part of your trip is going to be finding a certifying agent. So. One of the best ways to find uh, uh, an agent would be to ask local organic farmers. So, and how do you do that? Well, you ha you go, there's places on the internet, uh, sites that can help you uh, locate and give contact information to uh, organic farmers. Um, you can email or call them directly and ask who they use. Uh, many times... Um, on those farmers' websites, they will actually have the label of the um, certifying agent that they're using. Um, and one a great one to use is Local Harvest. Uh, they're a uh, national organization that uh, can uh, they break down the farmers into all different categories. Um, so once you've kind of asked around and uh, have some names, then I would say go to those websites for those agencies and do some research. Uh, things that you really want to, uh, are going to come into play, or is going to be distance to your farm. Uh, very important, especially um, for inspector. Uh, if he has to travel a great distance, uh, his fees will be more expensive. Um, uh, and also, you want someone who's going to understand your area. You certainly, if you're in Illinois, you don't want to have a, a certifying agency that is based out of California. So, find somebody who's local uh, that can work for you. Another thing to ask for them is uh, their fee structure or to research. Uh, that Those are also all listed on their websites. Uh, don't forget to look at the inspector's fees. Uh, how long will the process take? Are you going to be, uh, is this, maybe they don't have that many inspectors. Is this something that's going to take several years? Um, can they get right on it? Can they send somebody over as soon as your paperwork's done? Uh, very important to find that out. 
And another thing that they, they vary on is educational support. So uh, do they send out newsletters with up-to-date information on um, different uh, maybe uh, policies that are being made that impact organic farmers, um, new things, new organic listings, things that are okay for organic farmers to use up-and-coming problems or um, issues that they see on a national level uh, that they would uh, that they think everybody should know about um, those are really important to keep you informed so take that all into consideration um, while finding a, a certifying agent that will work for you because you do it is reciprocal Once you've decided on the agency, uh, co contact uh, your local office. Talk to somebody there. Um, ask them how you should proceed. Um, they usually give you real detailed information on how they would like you to handle things. They'll tell you exactly where to go to download uh, the correct paperwork. Um, and you have, if you do that, you have a name and a person that you feel comfortable, hopefully, with that uh, you'll be in contact with if you have questions, uh, anything that might come up that isn't uh, you're not sure about. Uh, it's it's nice to have that voice uh, or person to uh, to have contact with. Then once they give you some information and they tell you how to go about uh, beginning the process, you want to follow those instructions to the letter. Okay, don't uh, just think that oh, I don't have to answer that question, or oh, I could just... They will not go with that, okay? You're going to have to be very uh, patient and tolerant um, and proceed as they require. So once you've talked to somebody at the agent, uh, you, at the agency, you will... Uh, begin working on your paperwork. So, first year, uh, you ha are going to have to, especially for produce, you're going to have to uh, fill out an organic systems plan. And that is pretty much a plan for your entire farm. Um, and that's going to include field histories, uh, receipts for anything that you purchase that goes into uh, or onto the soil. Um, field maps, uh, any labels that are from, um, you'll have to keep the bags for some of these things, the receipts, uh, if you're going to do livestock, uh, they have another extra systems plan, one besides the organic systems plan that you'll have to fill out, you'll have to do two. And uh, the records, uh, some of the things they'll be asking you to keep, uh, livestock tags, birth records, feed records. Um, but the paperwork will be numbered, boom, 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 pretty straightforward. You just follow through and whatever they ask for, you fill in. And then there'll be other, along with this, those systems plans, they will have... Uh, um, checklists for you uh, to help you uh, ensure that you're sending in everything that they require. Once you think you have all of that paperwork done and you have all your receipts and anything else you might need, um, I would definitely call that person, your contact, at the uh, uh, certifying agency and just go over everything and make sure that you're not missing anything. So then you're going to submit your paperwork. Uh, some of it can be done online, but as far as your receipts and, and um, uh, labels, you'll have to send that in separately. Um, then you wait for a little while, give them a chance to look over everything. They will send you what's called the initial review, and that will give a listing of anything that you are missing. And you'll make these corrections and then resubmit any of the paperwork that, uh, that they ask for. Um, and really, you want to kind of, hopefully, uh, you don't have anything missing. 
uh, that's why it's important to, before you send everything off, that uh, you feel pretty confident that everything is in place uh, because this takes all time. So if you want to be certified as soon as possible, it really behooves you to make sure you have everything they are asking for. So once everything is in place and they, they have everything, they've reviewed it, uh, you've sent in anything that might be missing, uh, they will set up a time with you for the inspector to come out to your farm. And I put this, this is a silly picture, but, um, and they're usually very, very nice people who, who really do want to help you get certified. Um, so they'll take a tour of your farm, ask you some questions. Uh, you'll sit down, go over all the paperwork that they have, uh, the file they have on you, ask you um, questions. Um, anything else that might be missing, they'll ask you for, uh, and it can be a pretty smooth process if you have all your ducks in a row. Now comes the hard part. You'll just have to wait. Uh, they will send that off, all the information. The inspector fills out uh, some paperwork. He submits his report, um, and once they have that report, it gets reviewed again, and uh, that can take some time. You'll just have to be patient. You will then get a letter in the mail that will um, either be your uh, certificate uh, that says uh, you are Certified, certified organic, you're able to sell your products as such, you'll be able to label your products that way. Um, sometimes they have, uh, they will allow you to be certified even if there are a few problems they see. Uh, they call them non-compliance areas and they'll give you a list of those and they'll also give you a date at which, uh, by which time a deadline essentially that you need to uh, comply. Many times those are just like maybe you had your dates off on something or uh, you needed to get a receipt or you needed to, uh, to a label. They give you a little bit of time to send that back in but they'll go ahead and let you be certified. Uh, and then uh, you know at year's end you begin the process all over again but this time will be a little bit easier if, uh, if you're going to do everything exactly the same way it really is your, you fill out your plans and then you also fill out what are called updates. Uh, and depending on what type of operation you are, uh, it can go again very smoothly. So it's all up to you really how you um, lay out everything and how organized you are and um, you know just keep files and files of things. Anything you think might be important, keep it, put it in a file, and it gets all sorted out later on, and you'll be happy you did.